Guten Tag YouTube, this is Nanoburger here once again with a video about uh, 110 camera photography, film photography that is, and uh, specifically the Pocket Instamatic 60, uh, one of the highest quality 110 film cameras there are out there, uh, at least in this uh, bar type form factor. Uh, of course when I was a kid I had the uh, like an Instamatic 10 which was uh, just a piece of crap. Uh, but now that I'm older and uh, have more disposable funds, I can finally have my Pocket Instamatic 60. However, the problem with that is the Pocket Instamatic 60 takes a very specific power source uh, called the K battery. And if you see any of my other YouTube videos, you'll, you'll know what a K battery looks like. Uh, looks something like this. Very strange looking battery. Uh, actually has three cells in it. Uh, comes in either um, uh, wine cells, which are adds up to four volts, or these alkaline cells, which adds up to four point five volts. So uh, I still have a few of these batteries left, uh, but they're going on 20, 25, 30 years old now. So even if the battery was new, old stock, it's, it's probably on its way to, to being dead. Now, the, uh, as it loses uh, voltage, uh, you still can use it in your camera. I've found that uh, the camera will accept um, as little as 3 volts and as, mo uh, as much as 6 volts, uh, which is, of course, the, uh, the maximum I'm willing to put through the camera circuitry. Uh, but they seem to work fine fine with that. Okay, but once you run out of the batteries, you're kind of SOL. But I have come up with a few ideas on how to extend the life of the camera by uh, modifying the, the, the battery system on here. Uh, the first one I did was a kind of a janky tethered battery. Uh, this has the shell of a uh, K battery tethered to a battery pack, which you put on the outside of the camera. And uh, you can, like I said, use 3 volts, which is what I did here with uh, two uh, AA batteries. And kind of on the camera, it looks something like this. Uh, as you can see, we have this, I, I use triple A's here and have this uh, cord going into the camera and I've uh, kind of melted a little notch there so you can put the, uh, the shell of the K battery inside there. And this of course uh, works fine, but it is a little, little janky and cranky here. So uh, uh, I moved on to my next uh, thing which would be to basically reload the shell of the battery with new batteries. Now, this is what the batteries, the, the alkaline batteries, uh, look like uh, when they come out of the shell. And as you can see, they're spot welded together with these tabs, and they're kept uh, from shorting out with these spacers, and they fit inside the, uh, the shell of the battery. Um, do I have a shell of battery around here? Yeah. So this is the shell of the battery. So these fit inside here, and the the very last one kind of connects to a plate that, that covers the uh, uh, positive electrode. And you can actually reload these things if you really want to go through the work. Uh, but it is a pain in the butt because you have to have batteries that uh, have the same or similar dimension you have to put them together in series, and you have to put spacers on them so they don't short out. And just a big pain in the ass. I've done it before. It's just uh, not worth my time these days, uh, especially when uh, putting the tabs onto the batteries. Um, since I don't have a spot welder, I had to solder them. And, of course, then you're heating up the battery to soldering temperatures, and, and that's just not good for the battery either. Uh, so... The third thing I tried was to use a substitute battery, and this one is a 6-volt battery. And the uh, reason I picked it is because it is small enough to fit inside the shell of the K battery. 
so you have no problems fitting it into any place a K battery would fit. Uh, again, this looks a little janky, but uh, it seems to work, and the, and the camera doesn't mind the 6 volts whatsoever. However, in the future, I might try to uh, do a voltage-limiting Zener diode to get it down to a more um, interesting or uh, acceptable voltage for the camera. However, now there is another option. Uh, if you're into 110 photography, you've probably have seen on uh, eBay someone who has 3D printed a, a battery. And uh, I know of that one, and somebody got with me on the interwebs and said he had a 3D printed battery as well. Uh, his name is Mike uh, Chisina, and uh, he uh, actually was kind enough to send me uh, one of the batteries. So... Here we have his 3D printed battery. And uh, you can kind of tell it's 3D printed because it has the characteristic uh, extrusion printed lines on there. And uh, he certainly uh, is a lot of work put into this from reverse engineering it to actually uh, making it so it will uh, fit the form factor. Uh, I'll, I'll attach a, a slideshow that he sent me that uh, in the comments uh, uh, about how he actually makes these. And there, it is pretty involved, and it's a lot of work. So since he sent it to me, I figured I'd give it uh, an evaluation and see how it compares to uh, just a regular K battery. So I figured we could start off by doing the comparison. Uh, to the K battery and see how that works. Uh, first of all, one of the things I've noticed is that the K battery comes apart along the uh, the ventral line here, and his uh, 3D printed battery kind of comes in half, is sliced in half like this. Um, if you have a regular K battery shell, it kind of goes in two parts like this, and then comes together to form the battery. Well, his uh, kind of comes in two halves and, and goes in like a sandwich. Uh, let's see. The batteries seem to be about the same length. I have my calipers here. I'll zero that baby out. And we'll compare the length to a regular K battery. So... Let's get this straight. So we're looking at uh, just about 40 millimeters. And his is about 40.01 millimeters. So the same size. <laughs> Close enough for uh, government work. Okay, on the thickness, let's do the thickness of it here. Looking at 11.2 millimeters, and his thickness seems to be 10.6 millimeters. So uh, almost a millimeter thinner. Uh, th smaller is, is probably a lot better than, than being larger, since the, uh, the battery compartments are, are pretty tightly spaced. So let's, uh, let's just continue and do the uh, this edge here so 16.7 and 16.3 so close enough okay so let's look at the front of it and we see here that the K battery has this electrode this is the negative electrode it has it on three sides this side this side and underneath. I imagine that is to uh, accommodate different uh, electrode placements in different cameras or other electronic equipment. Now for the uh, Kodak Instamatic 60, uh, we know that the only thing that has to uh, be there is on the side here. And as you can see, he just has the one electrode on the side, uh, which should be fine. Let's go around to the nose here. Uh, the nose of it is uh, the positive electrode. 
and here it's it's somewhat of a little square and there's more surface area with the uh, production K battery. So I don't think that should be a problem. Um, but if we can get these little, uh, I think the actual nose here is a little more steep. This one is a little shallower, so I'm not sure if that'll be a problem or not. So you can probably see it better like this, maybe. Okay, so as you can see, the noses are a little bit different. This one has the a smaller base here and then this notch, and then kind of comes up. This one has a very flat nose and eventually goes up to the uh, um, top of the battery. Uh, hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. Uh, okay, we've seen the electrode side. Again, this one is cut in half, so uh, it's a little... Uh, has that line going to the middle. Okay, the bottom. Uh, nothing remarkable about, about the bottom. And this side, nothing remarkable about that, um, except you can see some of the uh, uh, 3D printing artifacts here. Uh, just what happens when you do an extrusion printing. Uh, the back of the battery here is significantly different. Uh, as you can see in the production battery, it uh, has kind of a notch. And that's designed to have this kind of go underneath a, uh, a lip inside the camera to hold the camera or hold the battery steady. And uh, this one, uh, the 3D printed one, does not. It's more or less flat up here, although it is uh, textured. Uh, this one has a kind of a thumb grippy texture. This one is uh, kind of more 3D printing uh, anomaly, I think. But it doesn't have that little lip there. We'll see if that's a problem either. Okay, well, let's uh, let's do a little bit of a voltage check here. Now, the... Uh, okay, come on. There we go. The, uh, the camera will, will take a whole lot of voltage variations pretty well. Like this is this is the standard uh, battery here. Um, negative electrode is there, positive electrode, and what do we got? Three ninety seven, ninety six, three ninety six volts. Not so bad uh, for a twenty five twenty five year old battery. So let's uh, see what the three D printed one is. Electrode. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 4.59, 4.6. That is a fully charged battery. So, uh, hits it right on the voltage. Uh, uh, he uses, I think, LR44 batteries, a fairly common watch battery. Uh, three of them in here. And uh, spot welds them, just like the professional batteries do. And uh, uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, what we'll do is... We'll Take it to the camera. And okay, well let's try the production battery first so you can see how it goes in. It goes in with the uh, uh, positive electrode facing towards the, the lens here. So put it in. And you can see that lip there kind of goes underneath and holds and it holds the battery in place for the most part. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we can check it, see, let's see. Yeah, you can see the battery uh, under uh, not enough light. That's a good way to check the battery. Um, if we do, all, do also have the battery check light, but sometimes these things can burn out and not give you any, uh, any, uh, any light, like in this case. Either that or just having the, the lower voltage on this uh, production battery is just not able to uh, uh, 
light up that one specific uh, light. Okay, get that out of there. Okay, let's check this one out. Okay, so first time putting it in, we'll do the same thing here. And oh, that is tight. Oh, that is not going in there. Hmm. Um, I think the I think that problem maybe with the nose of the battery. It uh, the battery compartment kind of slims down towards the front, and this does not seem to want to get in there. Ah. I don't want to break my camera or not be able to get that out. Um, hmm. Well, let's check the voltage to see if it actually is in contact with the uh, with the electrodes on the inside here. Let's do this. Come on. Oh, 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 oh gets it in. So that means full power. It is touching the electrodes. Let's. Uh, Take a look, see if it, uh, okay. So it should be fine. But I'm having problems keeping the, keeping the battery in contact with the electrodes. Huh, it just seems a little too big. Obviously we can't close the door here. Um, hmm. Well, let me see uh the battery is sh is almost exactly the dimensions of the other one i think it is the nose of the battery that's keeping it from going completely in there as you can see uh this is much smaller area right here and this seems a lot bigger so that might be a problem uh it is contacting the electrodes so if we could maybe shave off a couple of millimeters at the back here um, I don't know how deep that goes but uh, um, he did give me two batteries to play with so let me uh, let me sign off right now shave that down a little bit and see if it works in the camera Okay, I'm back, and I spent some quality time with some uh, sandpaper here, and as you can see, I sanded down the uh, the bottom of it, just a millimeter or two. I even tried to give it a little lip here to uh, uh, match the uh, the lip of the regular K battery, although it looked like I was starting to get into the uh, actual battery compartment, so I stopped. So that's probably not something I want to do. But um, let's see, the other battery that he gave me, you can see a little bit smoother and a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, shorter. So let's give this one a try. Okay, so we know that the electrodes are probably... Oh, oh, there you go. That's much, 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 much better. Okay, so we've got um, got the batteries actually in the slot now, which means we can close the back. And let's see if the electrodes still line up here. Battery test, good to go. Do the shutter test. Okay, that's good. And let's listen for the double click here. Okay, outstanding. Okay, uh, what do I think of these? Uh, this or at least uh, Mr. Chesena's uh, battery. Uh, it is uh, looks like it's excellent quality. It is a one-off battery, so you'll buy the battery and it will eventually go bad. So I would say, I know he used LR44 batteries on the inside. I would say switch to silver batteries. Uh, they have about 50% more life. And since this is a, a one and done battery, it might be nice to have as much uh, uh, power uh, as possible in there. Uh, the fit issues, I would say we probably have to either redesign the nose of this so it's a little bit thinner and matches the... Uh, uh, 
this battery a little bit better. And, but uh, it does seem to reach the contacts and no problem there. Uh, I guess either that or make it just a tiny bit shorter on the back so it can actually fit in the camera. Uh, of course, you're in the camera, and once you need to take the battery out, uh, this one is a little bit harder to get out. So if, uh, you know, obviously you can get a pair of pliers and, and take that out, no problem. But, um, yeah, there we go. So that's not so bad, I guess. Uh, I guess maybe not, uh, you don't have to have a pair of pliers, but uh, maybe have uh, a little bit redesign on the back here so it uh, actually uh, uh, is a little bit easier to get out. But, uh, man, for reverse engineering a K battery, doing it on uh, the 3D printer, uh, this is an excellent job, uh, much beyond my skill set. I had originally thought of doing that on SLA printer. In fact, I have an SLA printer uh, that I bought specifically for this job, but uh, I found my 3D modeling skills aren't all that great. So I'm still working on that project. I'm glad to see that other people have beat me to it and are making good, viable batteries for uh, these types of cameras. So uh, excellent job, Mike. And uh, uh, look forward to buying some in the future if, uh, if you ever get around that far. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <clears throat>